Hey guys, what's up? As you know, in my last video, I had showed you some plants that I had picked up from Equigenera. So they are considered to be, I guess, like fresh imports. But um, I felt like this would be a really good opportunity for me to show you guys what my current setup is for my plants and what it is that I intend to do because I'm about to start acclimating them and putting them in um, <laughs> my choice of substrates. And I feel like there's a lot of information out there where it can get kind of confusing in terms of acclimating your plants but I'm here to show you a very simple and easy way of doing it and also just to give you guys an update on um, the plants and their conditions so let's get into this video and I'm gonna start with showing you the actual setup and how it's currently looking all right so here is the current setup of my imports from Equigenera. Now they are residing in this giant exo tank. I've showed you guys this before, but if you're new, this is a very large exo tank. There is two LED lights that are attached to the uh, the door, and this exo tank is facing um, a west facing window. So like I said, these imports are just hanging out in regular water with a couple of drops of HB 101. And um, they're doing really well to be honest and today I'm actually just going to be working on the anthuriums and I think tomorrow I will work on the philodendrons. Now one thing that I do want to make note for you guys is like I had said these guys have been sitting in water since Saturday but I do change out the water regularly. So every day I do change out the water because you don't want it to look murky like this because if it does you're kind of like setting yourself up for some root rot and we're not here for that so I am going to be working on this guy today so that's fine um, after I finish whatever it is I'm doing I will be changing out the water on this guy and they have actually perked up pretty well I'm quite impressed actually I haven't lost any more leaves but um that'll be for another day where I show you updates on this guy. So we're going to be working on the Ethereums today. All right, so this is super exciting because all of my Ethereums actually look really good. The one Ethereum that I thought that was going to give me a run for my money was going to be the Ethereum Queen, but look at her. She looks perfect. There's no sign of stress. Like, not even root rot. Like, I have no root rot. So... I don't know this batch of anthuriums was was really good so I'm really happy for this I'm really stoked actually um, the one anthurium that is kind of making me question my life is this anthurium palitiforum because as you can see it does have some yellowing going on so that could be stress from just travel being cold in Canada I don't know but um yeah, I can't remember if it was yellowing when I was already unboxing it, so I'm going to have to look at the footage, but in any case, it is putting off a new leaf right over here, so that's exciting, and the roots look really good, like, they're very plump and hydrated, so once it starts to acclimate to the new substrate that I'll be using, I think it'll it'll be fine, and the, the growth point will be fine too. And um, the other two anthuriums, the Magnificum Silver and the Forgettii, look so good. There's no yellowing, no signs of stress, and the roots look pretty legit. So I'm happy. We're going to go ahead and pot these guys up. The thing that I do want to mention is if you look, take a look at these roots up close, you can see some residual soil that's left on the, uh, the roots. And... That's an indicator to me that these guys were thriving and doing really well in soil. So that's what I'm going to give this plant because why do I want to go ahead and stress it out and put it in semi-hydro when it's not used to semi-hydro and you know for sure you're going to get dropped leaves and it's just it's just going to be a nightmare. So I'm going to put it in um, soil. Now I'm using quotation because um, what I'm using is not really soil. Not really <laughs> there's like no soil in here what I actually am using is orchid mix so I picked up a bag of orchid mix from my local nursery and I was soaking it overnight um, with a couple of drops of HB 101 and um, I did add some 
tree fern fiber in here as well. So there's tree fern fiber and some old ponds um, because I have extra old ponds and I needed to get rid of it. So I figured let's just throw it in here. And um, yeah, I've learned that over the years when I am acclimating my plants straight into soil, they don't always take and it takes a really long time for them to acclimate. But when I acclimate them in something like this, it works so I'm gonna continue doing that and um, yeah I don't think I added anything else that's extra in here so we're gonna start potting these guys up all right so we're gonna start with this politiforum and I am gonna be using no drainage because I'm a very lazy person and I don't really like moving my plants around too much because I'm also a very clumsy person so I really don't want to risk um, you know, bumping it and breaking any of the uh, the leaves. So this is where it's gonna go. I think that's good. Also, I will be adding some of this myco. This is the great white myco, if it ever wants to focus. Um, you can pick it up on Amazon. I'm pretty sure that's where I picked this one up. So I'm gonna just give it a little bit of sprinkle in here and just continue potting it up and you know I think there's no right or wrong way of um, acclimating your plants um, and I'm saying that because everyone is different everyone lives in a different environment um, everyone has a different preference even in like in terms of like lifestyle like I had just said, I prefer to use no drainage because um, I don't like to move things around too much. But maybe if you didn't have a lot of plants, you would actually put it in drainage because, you know, you don't mind um, watching it drain and, you know, you have the patience for it. But I don't. <laughs> so one thing that I do want to talk about is that everybody has their own preference as to like what type of soil and what type of substrate they like to use and honestly there's no right or wrong way of doing anything it's just a matter of preference and what you're comfortable with and i feel like you know even people who are against no drainage have something to say and not that i've ever had anybody complain about um no drainage on my channel i do know that it's like a hot topic with other people and you know I feel like it's always down to whatever you're comfortable with and whatever suits your lifestyle you know all right so I am almost done potting this up and uh, one thing that I do want to mention is if um, you had actually soaked the substrate overnight do not please do not like water your plants right after this because you are putting it at risk for root rot um, it's hydrated enough so it should be fine and um, especially if you have it in like a vessel like this where there's no drainage where's the water gonna go <laughs> you're gonna put it at risk for root rot so don't water this again like the substrate that was soaking overnight it's it's fine like you don't need to give it any more water and uh, I think I'm good. I think that's good now. All right, so this is pretty much done. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like over the years, I've been very chill <laughs> with the um, the type of substrate I've been using. And I think it's because I have just become more aware and in tune as to what it is that my plants need. And I guess like what I mean by that is um, when I first started out, you know collecting plants i used to be so anal like you know i had to have like specific measurements as to how much um soil how much charcoal how much whatever it was that i was using and i feel like at the beginning of this like plant craze everybody or at least like people who were sellers would say oh this is like the secret soil mix to getting like really big robust roots and what have you what have you but in reality it's like your plants will grow just fine 
in whatever substrate you decide to put it in. So like, for example, um, it can grow just fine in moss. It can grow just fine in perlite and even water, you know, like any of like any substrate, like it'll be okay. And I feel like, I don't know, I guess I'm mentioning this because there's a lot of information out there and if you are new and you're just getting into plants for the first time, it can be really confusing. And I feel like there's a lot of pressure <laughs> as well because like I felt the pressure to have to get these like substrates so that my plants can survive. And you know, like also thinking back on it now too, it's like I did it because it was such a hassle to get these plants in the first place. Like it costs a lot of money to bring these plants in, right? So I feel like we go out of our way to get like the best substrate for our plants because we want the best survival rate. But in reality, it's like it could have just grown in water. <laughs> so I guess, you know, when you're potting up your plants and acclimating them, just just be aware of your environment, like the environment that you're gonna put your plants in because that's actually gonna dictate what kind of substrate you should be using. Um, so for example, if your plant is going to be residing in a very bright area where there's lots of um, air circulation and your soil mix or your substrate mix is very chunky and airy, it's going to dry out very quickly. So don't be surprised if you need to water it very often. Um, whereas like if it was in an area where it was getting a good amount of light, uh, not a lot of like air circulation, like for example, like it's not in front of a fan, um, I think a chunky air would mix like this is just fine. But I don't know. All I'm saying is that your plants are hardy, it'll grow in whatever you put it in. Just be mindful of where it's going to be residing because that will actually dictate what kind of amendments you will be adding. So, um, like I said, if it's bright lights, what have you, and you find it drying out very quickly, uh, maybe you want to opt for a little bit more soil so that way it holds on to the water a lot more because otherwise you'll find yourself, you know, <laughs> watering every, every three days or so. Okay, this one's pretty much almost done too. All right, so these guys are all potted up and good to go. Um, they're all in no drainage except for this one and that's just because I ran out of pots. <laughs> so it is in a drainage container and I will just put like a dish so that it can continue to wick up water as needed. Just not right now because like I had mentioned earlier, the substrates are hydrated so it doesn't need the extra water and um, because the roots are fairly close to the holes I'm not gonna risk any root rot so it's gonna stay where it is for now um, I'll just water it as needed when needed now these guys are all gonna go back into the exo tank and that's just because they were already thriving and doing really well over there so I'm just gonna put it back to the environment that it's used to um, the only difference is that it's in a new home meaning it's now in uh, my choice of substrate. So I hope you guys found this video helpful and I tried to make it as like easy and simple as possible, um, especially if you're just learning for the first time. But uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna have to mix up a new batch of substrate for the uh, philodendrons. So I'll work on that later and I'll probably film again tomorrow. But uh, hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye now.